Six monkeys. On you go. One, two, three, four. Here. Where's the other fellow? He can't come. Who says so? The beak. Fourteen days. Oh. Where's the other extra? In jail. What do we do? We must have six for the big scene. Can I use one of the choristers? No, you can't. Get another extra. Well, where am I going to find one at this time of the day? Don't ask me. Step outside and see if there's anyone hanging around the stage door. Righto. Any extras around here, Bob? I should try the boozer over there. That's an idea. Any of our boys in the other bar, is it? Not this afternoon. And well, they won't be now. We're just closing. Oh, I must find a fellow somewhere. Miles? Well, I didn't order it, but I might as well. In town there is a little pub which gives much satisfaction. The boys don't go there for the beer, the bar is the attraction. Her age is oh well quite all that and more on Monday morning. She knows her onions, take my tip, she's heard the gypsy's warning. Not this side, please. Oh, missus. She lays on powder, thick as crust. I smacked her cheeks and how she fussed. I couldn't see her face for dust. The barmaid at the rose and crown. She wears nice undies full of thrills. All silk and lace and saucy frills. I know because I've paid the bills and seen them at the rose and crown. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. And in that tavern there's a bus. Fourteen, she's round, she's got a figure fine and fair. There's lots of it and some despair. He comes in here and goes out there, the barmaid at the rose and crown. <laughs> hey! She likes to think that you are hers, and if you prove a quitter, she'll cry into your glass of mild and turn it into bitter. She'll have a little drink with you and make you nice and cosy. But if you never count your change, you'll make a hit with Rosie. She always looks so very posh, so many rings she wears. By gosh, she never has her hands to wash. The barmaid at the rose and crown. The pendant round her neck is great. It's larger than the dinner plate. She's gone round shouldered with the weight, the barmaid of the rose and crown. There is a tavern in the town, in the town, and in that tavern there's a lass in a glittering gown with jewellery. She takes the bun, her earrings weigh quite half a ton. She lets me swing on them for fun, the barmaid of the rose and crown. Thank you. Thank you. There is a tavern in the town, in the town. And in the tavern there's a lass in a glittering gown. If you should take her for a mug or try to sneak a little hug, she'll kick you in the bottle and jug. Oh! The barmaid at the rose and crown. I thought I told you not to come here. Well, I'd buy a drink if I could raise enough. Go on, get out of it. <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, want a job? A job? What kind of a job? I can put you on at the Opera House this afternoon. You can? Yes, you can do the night show too. Ten bob for the two performances. Is it all right? It's better than all right. What do you want me to do? Sing what I've just sung now? Well, be an opera, something a bit more showy. You won't have to sing at all. I won't have to sing? Well, what will I have to do? <laughs> Stage door. Beg your pardon, Mrs. Well, I declare, it's young George Butters. Aye? Hey, take a look. Aye, on stage. This will break his father's heart. Aye. Of course, we've got to tell him. What are you trying to do? Ruin the show? But, Mr. McGrew... Quiet! Get those close to the wardrobe, get your money and get out! Yes, uh, but, Mr. I... Joe, 
Get another extra for the night show. Yes, sir. Yeah, but, but, mister, look, you know, I, I was going to try it now. But, mister, this is the first performance I've done. And you're off. But, honest, mister, I know I can make good. The stage is in my blood. Then you must be anemic. I don't ruin my career the first day it started. Yes, Miss Carroll. Good afternoon, Miss Carroll. Good afternoon. You don't mind me calling you Miss Carroll, do you? You see, that's all I've heard anybody call you around here. I mean, I don't know your mother and father's names, so it's... Shouldn't you be on? Well, that's just it. I, I've got the sack. The sack? I dropped my musket. <laughs> and did that pick it up? Hey, fancy it. <laughs> it broke. Miss Carroll, Mr. Vanetti's gramophone record. Oh, put them in his dressing room. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Miss Carroll. I was wondering if you could put a word in for me with Mr. Vanetti. Well, I'm afraid... Well, you see, my auntie was Mabel Bannerman, the gaiety star, you remember? Well, she started in the chorus like I did today. Mr. Um, Carol, will you have Mr. Vanetti sign his autograph books? I will, right away. See, th there's my auntie's house. There's 23 bedrooms and everything you want outside. And there's my auntie standing next to the fountain. Hey, doesn't Mr. Vanetti sign his name? Nice. Well, I I I've got the family bug, you see. No, I, 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 what I mean, I mean, I've caught the itch from my aunt. That's worse. What I mean, you know what I mean. I know what you mean, but the opera season finishes after tonight's performance. Yes, but there'll be another one, and Mr. Vanetti might... Miss Carol? Yes? Mr. Riccardo would like to see Mr. Vanetti after the matinee. All right, I'll tell him. Well, Mr. Vanetti oh, might... Oh, Miss Carol? Yes? Oh! I thought I told you to get those clothes off. Get them off immediately! Immediately? At once! But I hardly know the young lady. Upstairs! He can't see anyone now. Oh, oh, shit. Shit. Excuse me. Mr. Vanetti won't... Oh, Mr. Ricardo, I expect he'll see you. You expect he'll see me? Well, that's very nice of him. Hey, Vanetti, I want to talk to you. Paris, Paris! Won't you sit down? I don't sit down. If I sit down, I'll start to think, and if I start to think, I'll have a stroke. What's the matter? Is anything wrong? Yes, these flowers are wrong. The flowers? They should be lilies. The opera season passed peacefully away this afternoon. You must be crazy. This afternoon's the best house you ever had in your life. Yes, and the best things in life are free. That's what the house was, free! Ever heard of passes? One for all, all for nothing? Passes? You mean the house was papered? Should have been distempered too. Listen, in South America, Gilly Bonetti may be... Mm, but what they blow him over here isn't kisses. Oh, he's one of the greatest tenors in the world. You've got to think that. You're his press agent. But I'm the guy losing the money, and I'm entitled to think he's a stingaroo! Tell you what's the size of your children, run off where I want to die, run off a dad, and I'll expand out. But, oi, see. What's he say? Uh, shall I leave out the swear word? Yes. Then he said absolutely nothing. But he can't say nothing to me like that! And there's no need to shout. There's no need to shout. When I'm being ruined every night, and twice on Saturdays, I'm entitled to shout! Oh, Mr. Ricardo, you look me in the face and say that behind my back. I tell you, Gilly Vanetti is a large bang. No, not a large bang. A huge blow-off. No, Gilly. The, the big shot. So what do I say, oi? Now look, Vanetti, I know you have a contract with me for next season. Si, si, my friend. It is a pig iron contract. No, cast iron. Cast pig, pig cast. What's the matter? Tell off. Vanetti, I'm willing to let you off next season. Let's cut our losses. Call it a day. Tear up the contract. Forget all about it. You ask for me to tear up next season? Look. 
These are practice records. I make for myself. Of all these songs I sing next season, you will see how good I sing. I play them. Hello. I want to listen. I play them. Phonograph. I want to listen. I play. Ah, my songbird. Gilly, gilly. You know, if you get excited, your voice goes. You are right. Then it is after this night's performance, yes? No. Not till we get to Las Palmas. Oh, in Glasgow, you say when we get to Manchester. In Manchester, you say when we get to London. In London is when you get to Las Palmas. What could be fairer than that? I'm trying very hard to keep my sanity. For if I have to stay here another moment, I shall be a shrinking imbecile! What's the matter with him? He has the wasp in the hat. A bee in his bonnet. Now we eat, tomorrow we sail for Les Palmas. Tomorrow? You can't go tomorrow, you've got a date. I do not give a fig for a date. But you've got to present your check to the actor's benevolent home. It's a most important appointment. I have only one important appointment. Las Palmas. But, but, Mr. Benetia. Goodbye, Miss Carroll. Oh, hello. See you later. You must I won't be here tomorrow. later. George Butters, you're going daft over a girl you've hardly met. Now, what's it going to be, girl or career? Career. All right, so you're a lawyer, aren't you? OK, then, if I want to this contract broken, you break it. That's what I pay you for. Excuse me, mister. Well, what do you mean by drawing up a contract without an out? I know I wanted the cast iron one, but not if I want to break it. Listen, Appleby, I haven't got time to argue. You've got to find me some clause in his contract that allows me to tear it up. I'm not going to pay him another 5,000 pounds. What do you want? Five shillings. Five shillings? Who are you? The soldier on the end of the line. What do you expect me to do? Salute? No, but I thought you could help me. You see, when I came in here, they promised me 10 shillings for two performances, and they've only given me five. Well, have you done the two performances? Well, <laughs> no, halfway through the first, I dropped my musket, and they gave me the sack. That's why you got five shillings. But I can't go home unless I get ten shillings. What am I going to do? I'm dying. He's asking me riddles. But I've got to get another five shillings. Then go out and earn it! Come on. Here you are, sir. Buy a pair of silk stockings for your young lady. <laughs> Haven't got one. You buy a pair of these and you soon will have. <laughs> Don't talk so daft. Here it is. The curl of what he put the kink into half the crown heads of Europe. It sets as it kinks, as it waves, as it curls. Now, inside the interiors, what do we find? Bond electrical batteries. The only air curler that develops its own central heating. Now, I would like to demonstrate on one of you. Are oh, you, madam? <laughs> Not on me, you don't. My old man likes me as I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, sir, would you like wonderful curls? Not off, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you, my friend. Now, in the interest of progress, you will demonstrate. Is it worth half a crown? Half a crown? In the interest of progress. All right, sit down. <laughs> now, you take the first Britannia waiver, so. Then you coil a strand of the hair around the cylinder, and when you are satisfied that the coiling is tight enough, you bring the copper wire into position. And from the moment the copper wire is in position, the hair have started to curl. And so we find the results of the Britannia miracle waiver. A head of curls full. If he went down Bond Street, five pounds it would cost him. Hey, fancy. It works. The gentleman himself is astounded. Yeah. Hey, mister, how do I get these out? Ah, that is where the Britannia waiver leads the world. They don't come out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't? <laughs> Ooh! I can't go on like this. George? Yes, Dad? Come here, George. Yes, Dad. Back late, aren't you? Yes, Dad. Come in. Yes, Dad. <coughs> yes, Dad. Hello, Mother. Hello, George. Good evening, George. Aye. Well, did you get that vacuum cleaner job? Did you sell any? Well, yes and no, Dad. Yes and no? Well, yes, I didn't get the job, and no, I didn't sell any. Then where have you been all afternoon? I went to several places looking for jobs. I went to a builder's near Euston, and I saw the foreman, and I asked him could he give me a job, and he said yes. He was looking for a smart, intelligent young man. Oh, uh, well, and what happened? He told me to go and find one for him. George Butters, it's my opinion you don't like going to work. 
Yes, I like going to work, and I like coming away from work. It's that bit in between I don't like. <laughs> George Butters, I tried to raise you the best I know how. I brought you up to be an honest, speaking, God-fearing young man. Not I'd reckon without the family curse. Honest. Be quiet, Mother. Do you deny that you've been displaying yourself brazenly on a stage this afternoon? With paint on his face. Aye. Oh, we've got a couple of loudspeakers now. Well, let me tell you, I'd rather be on a stage than live in a place where there's a couple of narrow-minded tittle-tattlers. Yes, that's what you are, tittle-tattlers. Come, Jane. Aye. George, you didn't mean that. Yes, I did, Mother. Just because my auntie was on the stage, they're always picking on you. I've heard them. They're nothing but a couple of nosy parker and old humbugs. If that's the manners the stage teaches you, and deck your hat off. Girls! Yes, Dad, I, I, I was... I... Have you gone mad altogether? Ah! The... You don't think I did anything wrong, do you, Mother? Of course not, lad. I mean, after all, I was only trying to earn some money, them and, well, showing off them rotten waivers. They'll all come out with a good wash. At least, I hope so. Good morning, George. Good morning, Mother. Oh, I thought it'd be a nice change for you. Hey, Mother, they're all out. George, lad, after last night, I don't think I should go to Fernlands today. What, not visit me, Auntie? Mother, whatever are you thinking about? I was only thinking of your father. If my dad's got anything more to say, I'm going to tell him straight. Oh, and who are you going to tell straight? Uh, the, uh, the man at the lane bridge change. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him straight as well with him. Joe. Hello, George, my boy. How's Auntie? Oh, she's fine. But what's to do? They're all busy. Oh, they're busy rehearsing. They're putting on a show for Gilly Vanetti, the opera star. Gilly Vanetti? He's coming here this afternoon. What, to live? No, no, to give 500 pounds to the home. Oh, George! <laughs> Hello, Auntie. Hey, I thought you'd forgotten me. So now, have I ever done that? My mother sent you that. And here's 10 bob to buy some frillies. <laughs> and I would buy them too if I thought anyone would see them. <laughs> <laughs> you cheeky fast cat. <laughs> How's your mother? She's all right. And your father? I'm afraid he's all right too. Now, you mustn't say that, George. Your father's a proper man. You know, sometimes the way he acts, I think he's a proper gump. <laughs> hey, open up! <laughs> oh. You're doing great. Oh. But it's out of date. Oh. It's quite a show. Oh. Hey, but it wouldn't go. Oh. It's nice and bright. Oh. But it isn't right. Oh. It's pretty slick. But it wouldn't click. There's just one thing. Even at your age, you'd be all the rage. Well, what's that thing? Though you're getting old, you could knock them cold. Well, what's that thing? If you want to come back, it's the thing that you like. Say, what's that thing? Why, just that thing swing. Oh, you needn't start pushing up daisies. Although you're 75. Swing, mama. Swing, papa. Keep yourself alive. Oh, you needn't go all to blazes, even though you're 81. Swing, sister, swing, mister, give yourself some fun. You want to cue a sciatica? Just shake it away. You don't need a rub, but a rubber a dub dub Watch that rhythm, take it away. Oh, you needn't be past your heyday, although you're 95. Swing, mama, swing, papa, keep yourself alive. <laughs> To us, Miss Dean. We had hoped that the newspaper picture of Mr. Vanetti handing over the cheque might start the ball rolling. I know, but he really had a most important engagement. Well, I'd be grateful if you'd explain to the old folks. They'll be very disappointed. Tell them he was detained by for an affair of state. An affair? Oh, yes, sure I will. Oh, you needn't go rootin' tootin' even though you're 75. Swing, mama, swing, papa, keep yourself alive. And you needn't be highfalutin', even though you're 81. Swing, mister, swing.
wondering sister, give yourself some fun. Though you're alive and kicking now, how long will you stay? Keep yourself young with the beat of the gong and dance your blues away. It's a tonic, there's no disputing, even though you're 95. Swing, mama, swing, papa, keep yourself alive. You gotta swing, you gotta swing. What on earth have you done to your hair? Yeah. Oh, they, they've come back again. Oh, all that washing for nothing. Hello, Miss Carroll. Take your hat off. Well, if you don't mind, it's a bit gone. It's, you know, it's... Uh... It's amazing. Yes, it is, isn't it? You see, it must be the heat of my hat that's brought them all back again. You're coming with me, young fellow. You too. Now sit there and don't move. Hey, hey, what do you think you're doing? You'll make me look like a mucky pup. You'll be a mucky pup. You'll be Gilly Vanetti ready to present his check. But, Miss D. Fetch your photographer and we'll get on with it. Of course. Hold that. You're doing this to help Fernlands and Vanetti too. Well, I don't mind helping a fellow that's down. Oh, I wouldn't call Vanetti down. Yeah, <laughs> that's because you don't know. Don't know what? He's going to lose his job. What are you talking about? Well, I heard the manager say he was going to find some way to break his contract. Oh, Ricardo said that, did he? The photographer's outside. I think you better supervise this, Miss Dean. Right. That looks fine. Oh, don't touch it. I'll talk to you later. Now, how about some picturesque setting? Over there by the fountain. And now, if Senior Vanetti will smile and hand over his check to the superintendent, I think you've got your picture. Okay, boys, any time you like. <laughs> when Gilly Vanetti, the celebrated opera star, was handing over a check for 500 pounds to the actor's benevolent home yesterday, there was an unfortunate accident. I couldn't be more pleased. I trust it damped his ardor. Later in the day, Mr. Vanetti left for Las Palmas. No, didn't dump his ardor. Wait a moment. Where did he leave for? Las Palmas. But that's most interesting. Do you know I believe Mr. Vanetti has found us the answer? I don't even know the question yet. The clause that breaks the contract. What? Las Palmas is in the Canary Islands. So what do you want me to do, sing? Now listen. Clause 11 says, the party of the second part shall not leave the United Kingdom without the consent in writing of the party of the first part. Clause 11. Miss Target? Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Get me Vanity's flat. I think I got something there. You? But, Mr. Ricardo, if you remember, it was I. I don't know what I pay you for. I get all the ideas from... Hello, hello, Carol? Oh, Carol. I wanted to talk to Vanetti. Vanetti? Oh, I'm afraid you can't. Was it anything important? Oh, nothing. So he's left for Las Palmas, has he? Has he? Has he left for Las Palmas? No, he's still here. He changed his mind at the last moment. What? Yes. Must have been a quick change. The papers have him on board the boat already. What? In bed? Laryngitis? Oh, that's too bad. She's trying to cover up for him. <laughs> Verbum set sapienti. Well, tell him to keep his temperature down. We'll be right over. Oh, but he mustn't see anybody. Who is it? Cablegram for Miss Dean. Is there any answer? Yes, yippee! Hold water. Don't let anyone come up here without ringing me. Signor Benetti! Signor Benetti! We've both been very smart. Ricardo just phoned and he had Clause 11 written all over his voice. He was asking questions about the Las Palmas trip. I think he's going to try and be clever, so don't be too long in that shower. Mm -hmm. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, I, I feel proper daft in this stuff. Do you know, if I fell down in this collar, I'd chop my ears off. <laughs> oh. Look at these. Hey, whiskers. Yes, Vanetti's. 
There's nothing happened to him, has there? No, I had them made up. Oh. Do you know how to put them on? Oh, yes, my auntie showed me. Well, go on, stick them. Stick them. Oh, stick them. Oh. Now, don't be long. Ricardo will be here any minute. Oh, it won't take me long. Who? Who did you say was coming? Mr. Ricardo. What, you don't mean the manager bloke? Yes. Oh, I don't feel so well. I don't think I can do it, Miss Carroll. You can and you're going to. Where's the George who was willing to do anything for the old folks at Fernlands? Well, I didn't know I'd have to sit round dressed up like... Well, like Mr. Wu. Besides, we don't know if his nibs will give another 500 pounds. We do. Listen to this cable from Vanetti. Double idea and knockdown stop will pay 500 pounds positively. Whee, another 500, that's a thousand they'll have. Oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm sorry, Miss Carroll. I don't know how that happened. It must be the Jekyll and Hyde in me. <laughs> oh, by gum, that's hot. I'll put the cosy on it. Oh. Yes? Yes? Thanks. What's to do? Ricardo's on his way up. Oh. Now put on your whiskers and hop into bed. And don't forget you're in bed with laryngitis. With who? With a sore throat. Oh. And remember, you're a very sick man. You can't talk. If they ask you anything, answer by signs. <laughs> don't worry, I'll be proper for Willie. Hurry up. I'll get your tea. I'm ready now. George, your hair. Oh, it's gone straight. Must have been the water. Ooh. What are we going to do? Well, it wants warming up again. Haven't you got a gas oven I can put my head in? Oh, George, why did you have to go and get it wet? Well, I'm sorry, Miss Carroll. I know, I could put my hat on. What, in bed? Oh. Ooh. I'll have to keep him out of here, that's all. Now, for the love of Mike, keep quiet. Oh. Could I have my cup of tea? Yes. Not a sound. Stay where you are and don't stir. Oh, what's it to do? you make so much noise? Vanetti's asleep. Well, I want to see him. The doctor said he wasn't to be disturbed. I won't disturb him. I'll kiss him gently on the forehead. I tell you, you can't disturb him. Him? If I pay a man 5,000 pounds per season, am I or am I not entitled to see him? Well, I'm afraid, as party of the second part, unless a writ of habeas... You make me sick. Yes, and Vanetti's sick. And neither you nor anyone else is going to see him. I believe you. You know for why? Because he isn't dead! Well, I'll go to... You probably will in due course. Well, now you've seen him, perhaps you'll leave him alone. Hey, what's the matter with your throat? You got some of those old decayed notes stuck in it? I, uh... Gilly, Gilly, your voice. You mustn't talk. Ah! Are you in pain? Aye, aye. Oh! Good. You had this coming to you, Gilly. It's poetic justice for all the pain you caused me. Only mine wasn't a pain in the throat. Hey, what's he wearing this for? To keep his ears warm. No, no. You must keep that on. <coughs> oh, yes. Uh, this is uh, one of my friends. Fine, you must bring the other one up sometime. What's he up to? He's saying hello to your friend. Oh, very ingenious. I was hoping he'd gone mad. How do you feel now? Irritated. Not up to scratch? No, he says he's feeling loud. Well, not so good. So will you please go? All right, Gilly. So you don't feel so good. Who knows? By next season, you might be dead. Why don't you be wise and take a settlement for your contract right now? How's about it? <laughs> I imagine that one answers itself. All right. So you want to be tough, eh? Well, two can play that game, and before I finish with you, 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 you... You son saw something? You'll be offering me your contract on bended knees. 
And don't tell me to put a sock in it! I know. It's a bee. Yes, and you know what that means? Buzz off! <laughs> Hey, call him back. <laughs> I've just thought of a beauty. As far as I'm concerned, there. What's that? A couple of squirts. <laughs> I'd like to break his neck. It might be easier than breaking his contract. <laughs> Listen, when I want you to be a comedian, I'll let you know. Just now, I want you to be a lawyer. <laughs> I wonder if clause five would lead us anywhere. I'm sure it would. Would lead us through clause six, seven, and eight, and back to clause two again. I don't know what I'd pay you for. I've got it. If it's as good as your last one, you can keep it. Now, look here. Uh, clause five says the party of the second part hereby undertakes. Forward! Get away! Backward! You can't do a thing like this and get away with it. My dear, delightful young lady. Clause 5 in Bonetti's contract states, the party of the second part, that's Bonetti, shall obey all instructions given to him by the stage manager. To what? To wit. What? I said to wit. What do you think you are, an owl? But Gilly Bonetti's a sick man. If he's too sick to appear, that's force majeure and automatically cancels his contract. Oh. Oh, but he's not that sick. Exactly. And that's why he's up there doing what the stage manager tells him. Terrible. Gilly Vanetti doing that. If it ever gets out of this theater, I'm ruined. You couldn't help it. It wasn't your fault. No, but it was me who had to order him to do it, wasn't it? This is it. to turn a first-rate opera singer into a fifth-rate ballet dancer. This dancing can't lose me any more than the singing, and this funnier. Ha, <laughs> ha! Mr. Vanetti can always refuse to do what the stage manager tells him. And don't you wish he would? Excuse me, sir. What is it? Uh, Signor Vanetti, sir, couldn't I tell him to stop? Stop? Certainly not. I'm just beginning to enjoy it. Sir, you can't ask a man of his standing to... Why not? But it's outrageous, sir. A man like Gilly Vanetti rolling about a dirty stage. Dirty st Is it very dirty? Well, it's a... Uh, would you like it clean? No. Not that, Mr. Ricardo. You mustn't ask me to do that. I won't. Uh, I won't. <laughs> You can't get away with this. You're simply trying to humiliate him. No court in the world would uphold it. Well, he can always refuse to do it. We've got him there. We? <laughs> I suppose this is your idea, too. Oh, but Mr. Ricardo, shut Is he sweeping to your satisfaction? Oh, Miss Carol. Well, is he? Yes. No, he's not. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Tell him to sweep it harder and faster and with one hand behind his back. Did you? Did you hear that, sir? Oh, no. The stage looks cleaner already. You're right. Wasn't dirty enough in the first place. That was very careless of me. <laughs> now you'll have to clear it all up. Don't do it. The contract doesn't say anything about taking orders from you. Do I pay you for her to be right? Clause five. All right, all right. Come here, you. Come on. You tell him. Mr. Vanetti, would you please sweep up the snow? Cut out the mister, cut out the would you, and cut out the please! Sweep up the snow. Now!
He's done it. Quadrat demonstrandum. Now, don't you start. You were terrific, George. You've shown them. All finished, eh? All finished, Mr. Ricardo. Every single bit? Every single bit. That's all I wanted to know. I know you did. You were wonderful. <laughs> and I can tell you something else. I did it on them. You did what? <laughs> I told them ten too many. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, what's to do? Have I done something wrong? Your whiskers. Well? Well, I'm afraid they might come back here and, and see you without them. Oh, well, let me leave them off for a bit. When I've got them on, I feel I don't look like the kind of chap that I'd like you to think I look like. See what I mean? Yes, I think I do, George. <laughs> Why are you doing all this for me? Because you deserve it. When I think of the things Ricardo made you do... Well, I nearly chucked it up halfway through the snowstorm when I got to 14,000 and no sign of a thaw. But I didn't. <laughs> I did the last thousand for you. For me, George? <laughs> I bet you think I'm daft. George, I know it sounds silly, but I can't think of any other way to put it. I think you're the biggest little man I ever met. <laughs> what, me the biggest little... <laughs> you shouldn't say that. It makes me go all unnecessary. Besides, I'd do more than that to earn 500 pounds. And for what? To give to the actor's benevolent home? Oh. Well, that's another thing, Miss Carroll. I told you that my auntie was famous, and that she had a lot of money, and that Fernlands was her home. Well, it's... I knew about Fernlands all the time. Huh? And it is her home. And one day she's going to be famous as your aunt. Do you really think so, Miss Carroll? I do. And don't you think it's time we cut out the mist? Huh, now you're talking like Ricardo. Cut out the mister, cut out the would you, cut out the please. Poor George, I'm afraid I've landed you in an awful lot of trouble. Uh, I wouldn't mind what I landed in with you. Carol, do you know, Carol, like when I used to find that troubles came my way, I always wished it wouldn't stay. But I'm not so sure since you came along whether I was right or wrong. If you ask me, would I entertain the lions at the zoo by singing in beside them just before the lunch was due? Would I do it? I'd do more. I'd do it with a smile. If you ask me, would I take a trip to Paris in the spring? And watch the thrills and see the girls and never do a thing. Would I do it? I'd do more. I'd do it with a smile. <laughs> I'm not a super sort of man. There isn't much that I can do but sing. Yet if you saw me at a fight, I could knock Joe Louis out the ring. If you ask me to be hypnotized and go into a trance Or even pay my income tax just ten years in advance Would I do it? I'd do more, yeah ma'am I'd do it with a smile When we're all alone, no one here to see Foolish thoughts occur to me Maybe you can guess what they're all about so I'll let the secret out. If you ask me, would I settle down and build a little home? Carve the ham and push the pram and never, never roam. Would you do it? I'd do more. I'd do it with a smile. 
If you ask me, could your mother stay and all your maiden aunts, or suggest I take me trousers off? Oh, so you could wear the pants, would I do it? I'd do more. I'd do it with a smile. I don't know much about romance. That is something I've been frightened of. But someone taught me how to dance. Maybe you can teach me how to love. If you ask me, would I sew for you and knit some baby clothes? Or take the baby's nappy off and wipe his little <laughs> nose? Would I do it? I'd do more. I'd do it with a smile. Good night, George. Sleep well. I'll do it with a smile. Good night, Carol. <laughs> How much long is she gonna be up there? Well, the night is young. Maybe, but it's making me old. If this scheme of yours goes wrong... Under clause 13, any undesirable publicity, open Shh. that... Shh, here she is. <laughs> all right, now we all set? Hey, Durant. Yes? You know your job? How dare you, sir? That's my wife. Uh, by the way, what's the woman like? She's an actress, she's out of work, she's blonde, but she's very nice. Go on. How dare you, sir? That's my blonde. I mean, that's my wife on information received. No, no, no. That's my wife. Stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not used to working without a script. How dare you, sir? That's my wife. Stop. Uh, by the way, what will they be doing? I don't know. In any case, whatever they're doing, you don't say stop. You know, this idea of mine is the best you've had yet. It had better be, or I'm reporting you to the Law Society. She thinks I'm the biggest little man she knows. Hey, I think you're the biggest little twerp I know. Huh? What chance have you with a girl like that? Who are you? I'm Jiminy Cricket. Never heard of you. Well, you should go to the pictures more often. I'm your conscience, George Butters. Oh, is that all? You know, that's the trouble with you. You ought to listen to me now and then. But you're always telling me to do such daft things. I never told you to fall for Carol Dean. That's the daftest thing you ever did. Well, I love her. Mm. I know I love her. You love her. What could you give her? If turkeys were sixpence a pound, you haven't enough to buy her a feather from a tom tits here at all. Now, look here, Jiminy Cricket. One day I'll earn a lot of money. I'll be famous. Anyway, who wants a feather from a tom tits here at all? Hmm. You just saw a girl sitting on your bed. Couldn't be. Can't be true. You know perfectly well it's true when she was wearing frillies. I never saw that. Well, go and have another look. I will. What am I going to do? You take your clothes and hat, climb out of the window and down the fire escape. Oh, there you go, talking daft again. If I do what? Well, aren't you going to do something? Oh, well, I was going to tell you that you'd come to the wrong room. <laughs> well, what's gone wrong with you, missus? Take your clothes and hat, climb out of the window and down the fire escape. <laughs> oh, well, I... I, 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 I what do I do when a girl starts crying? You take your clothes and hat, climb out of the window and down the fire. Oh, shut up. You mean me? Oh, oh no, not you, Mrs. I, I was talking to... Uh, I was talking to Jiminy Butters. You look so kind. You'll help me, won't you? Well, it, it just depends what you want me to do. Now, George Butters, no wishful thinking. And don't sit on the bed. Oh, <laughs> you twerp. I'm in desperate trouble. Everything I've been touching lately seems to have gone wrong. <laughs> well, don't touch me. Now, look here, Mrs. You can't stop here. You'll have to go. I'm a respectable single man. Oh, please don't turn me away. Please. I've got no money, no friends, no home, no hope. I, 
got nothing. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You've got something all right, but you can't bring it in here. <gasps> but where can I go? Like this? What can I do? You well, take, you take your clothes and hammer to the window and down the fire escape. fire escape. I know, I'm telling her. Mother! She should be up there by now. Of course, he may prove obdurate. Oh, forget it. I got Spanish blood myself. How dare you, sir? This is my wife. Oh, oh, please, would you mind waiting a moment? My husband is just paying the taxi. All right. Oh, I'm afraid I kept you waiting. How dare you, sir? This is my wife. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I, I had no idea. Excuse me. Good night. Uh, stop, Mr. Trump. Stop, Mr. Trump. Uh, stop, Mr. Trump. Uh, stop, Mr. Trump. You know what to do? How dare you? Shh. Okay, Barrelmar, keep it for later inside. What's this? It's a handy little instrument given me by an unsuccessful client. Okay, boys. In you go. It's very quiet, isn't it? What do you want? A brass band? Uh, come here, you. How dare you, sir? This is my wife. No, not yet, Rodin. You haven't even seen the girl yet. Such actors you get me. Right? Ah, get out of me. Open up here. Open up here, do you hear? Open up or I break the door. Mr. Ricardo, really, I'm flattered, but why bring your friends? But, uh, but... I'm afraid I haven't the legal knowledge of Mr. Appleby, but isn't this known as forcing an entry? What are you doing here? I was about to ask you the same question, but I think I'll let the police do that instead. No, listen, girl, girl, don't do this, listen. No, 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 What's the idea of wasting my time? I want my money. Money? So someone's bribing witnesses. They put people in jail for that, don't they, Mr. Appleby? Well, I, um... Hey, why are you here in Bonetti's flat in his bed and his dressing gown? Because he's staying out tonight, and as I was working late, he said I could have the use of his flat and his bed and his dressing gown. Ah. You missed this one. You think I'm pretty dumb, don't I? A magnificent piece of understatement, my friend. Now get out. All right. But remember this. If Annette is well enough to flit about tonight, he's well enough to come to the theater tomorrow to do something rather more strenuous. Hey. And for heaven's sake, play your pipe and get these other rats to follow you. And don't you call these rats rats! George, in you come. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, Carol. I'm glad you got rid of them and nearly gave up. Oh, by George, it must have been freezing out there. Ah, it was, and I'm not going on that ledge anymore. Why? Well, the pigeons didn't like it. Oh, <clears throat> come on, help me with Cleopatra here. Oi, get out of it. You know, you're a cheeky, fast cat and nearly got pneumonia through you. I didn't mean any harm. Mr. Ricardo promised me a job if I did it well. He said it was a joke. A joke? <laughs> well, remember, you laughs, laughs. He, he, he laughs, that's what he does, see? Now, if you're a smart girl, you'll take your hat and your clothes. Climb out of the window and down the fire escape. 
Yeah, I don't know what I'd have done without you, Carol. The feeling is mutual, George. If you hadn't to come in when you did, anything might have happened. I'll say it might, and this is Jiminy Cricket saying it. Well, you can't blame me if Fanetti wasn't in his flat. Hey, couldn't I swear I saw him in his flat? I'm afraid not. It would be your word against Miss Deans, and you know what the judge called you the last time. I don't remember. Anyway, who is Ananias? Excuse me, Mr. Ricardo. The stage manager says he told Mr. Vanetti to do what you said. And did he do it? Yes, he's in the middle of it now. Clause 5 shall do as the stage manager tells him. <coughs> Clause 11 shall not leave the country. <coughs> Clause 13, undesirable publicity clause. <coughs> oh, it's a disgusting contract. There isn't an out for me in it anywhere. Perhaps if you allowed me to have another look, I might You've like... sold me your last clause, Appleby. <laughs> Go and work for Vanetti. I might stand a chance then. My hat. It's outside! Well, if it isn't old Black Pants, the lawyer. Oh, yourself. Swifty, what do you call him Black Pants for? Because he's got a long grey overcoat on. Well, he ain't. Will you do me a favour? Will you act as though we were just walking along the corridor and nothing happened? Chucking things, eh? Right? Troll, Slappy. Watch your guff. Got something good for you in the three o'clock. Look, Swifty, I can't see you now. I got trouble. Huh, you got trouble? What do you think the bookies are gonna have when this filly walks in at 100 away? Eh, Slappy? Yeah. Will you go away? I'm in no mood to talk horses. He's not in the mood. Lady Luck walks in the door and he's not in the mood. Listen, Gav, this tip's red hot. We had to beat up the stable there to get it. I'm not interested. Don't you understand the King's English? Scrum! Full drive. <laughs> hey, my desk. Control, hey, Slappy. You must excuse him. He can't resist a circle. This will have to be rebarnished. Huh, he worries about a desk. With 100 to 8 certainty, you can buy 50 desks and have them varnished three times a day. Miss Target? What's her name? Control. Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Tell the porter to come up and chuck two men out. New porters are hard to get, Governor. I don't want a new porter. You will, if you try and chuck us out. Miss Target? Yes, Mr. Ricardo. Tell the porter to stay where he is. Yes, Mr. Ricardo. Will you put that knife away? Control, Slappy. Circle's affecting. Look, here's a pound. Give me the horse and go. Go. I don't want you to feel that you're being forced into this, Gaff. Give me strength. What's the matter? You're different. Has the wife come back? Wife? Come here. Come here. You see that man out there in the cradle? Yeah. Just cost me 5,000 pounds, he's gonna cost me another 5,000. 5,000 for doing that? I'm in the wrong business. Why do you have to pay him 5,000? Because he's got a contract and I gotta pay him another 5,000 next season. Oh, but wait a minute, Governor, that can't be union rates. But that's what his contract calls for. Well, me and Slappy could spill out words for half that. Chalk him on gates, too. Ah, go back to sleep. Do you want me and Slappy to talk to him, Gav? Talking is no good. I tell you, he's got a contract and I can't break it. You remember that mug at Epsom who wanted his money back? What did we do to him? Broke his arm. And that smart aleck at Donkers too said we went on the level. What did he get? Broken legs. You see? We're good at breaking things. We ought to be able to break a contract. Say you might at that. What's it worth? Now listen, boys. I don't want none of that race gang stuff. And it's nothing to do with me. Ah, so long as he disappears or leaves the country, you don't know nothing. 
All right. Here's Arthur Palms. Speak a bit louder. I didn't hear. 150. You're still a bit faint. 200! It's a deal. 250. All right, listen. I'll send you a check. Where do you live? That's my business. We'll take cash. Oh, by the way, that horse's name's a sucker. Hello, Carol. How's it going? All right. I've nearly finished. I've only got the ice to dot now. Nice work. I'm saving this till last, and when I dot Ricardo's eye, I'm going to dot it good and hard. <laughs> <laughs> now, look after your money, keep away from the drink, and don't buy no more knives. Oh, Swifty. I saw such a beauty in the ice street. It had a lovely pig sticker on it. That's just what we don't want, pig stickers. This is going to be a clean job. And no more knives. All right. No more knives. Hello? Mr. George White on the telephone. Well, put him through. Hello? Hello, Georgie. When's the new show open? Next Thursday, if you'll give me a break. Listen, my star's walked out, so now don't yell at me. I want to borrow Gilly Vanetti. Yes. What? I asked you not to yell. I'll give you a thousand pounds profit on his contract and ten percent of the gross. You're offering me a thousand pounds profit and ten percent of the gross to take Vanetti's contract off my hands? I know it's a lot to ask, Ricky, but it'll save my show. I'll give him his own spots in the program. He can do his own stuff. Ah, come on, Ricky, transfer him to me. Will his contract stand for it? Uh, Georgie, just hold on a minute. I I I'll get it out of the safe. How did it go? Miss Target? Miss Target? Oh, there you are. Miss Target, take these keys and get me Vanetti's contract out of the safe. Not that safe, the big safe! That's it. Hello, Georgie, just hold on, just getting it for you. Oh, yes, here it is. Yes, it can be transferred to a third party by mutual consent. Now, listen, Georgie, I wouldn't do this for anybody else but you. You're a white man, Ricky. Bring Vanetti to my office in the morning to sign his consent to the transfer. Is it a deal? It's a deal! What? Vanetti will be delighted. He and I are like... like this. All right, bye-bye, Georgie. Miss Target? Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Send the stage manager in immediately. You turn for me, sir? Oh, yes, come along. You've got some new orders to give. Gilly! <laughs> you, you missed me that time. Have another go. <laughs> go on, you heard what Mr. Ricardo said. Have another go. <laughs> Very funny, you've got a marvelous sense of humor. But this is Gilly. Calm down, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But my dear fellow, you no need to do that. It's a joke, it's a practical joke. All of it, everything I've asked you to do. Don't you understand? It was for a bet. That's it. The stage manager, he bet me I wouldn't ask you. <laughs> but I know you with your marvelous sense of you. <laughs> to Gilly Vanetti, whose golden voice has thrilled the world. Here's wishing him health, wealth, and success in that even wider field of vocal endeavor to which he has been called. Hey, wait a minute. What wider field? And who called him? <laughs> Fancy me forgetting to tell you. You'll be thrilled when you know. Mm, the suspense is killing him. <laughs> I know I've got a sense of humor, too. Now cut the build up. Who called Gilly where? I've arranged for him to go into George White's vanities. The show opens Thursday and he starts rehearsing tomorrow morning. <laughs> Gilly in a leg show? You must be mad. But it's nothing to do with that part of the show. He's getting his own spot with excerpts from the operas. So he can't object to the transfer. Read the contract. You know perfectly well he can't do it. He's got laryngitis. <laughs> I got that fixed. I'll have the two best throat doctors in town see him this evening. Now take him home, keep him warm, give him anything he wants within reason, but he must sing. And if he can't? Then the contract's broken. He'll sing all right. Come on, Gilly.
Miss Target? Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Find the two best throat specialists in town and have them go to Benedict's flat this evening. Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Oh, Miss Target? Yes, Mr. Ricardo? Did you send that wire five pounds each way at the soccer? Yes, Mr. Ricardo. Did it win? No, Mr. Ricardo. No. I shouldn't worry anywhere. A thousand pounds for nothing, ten percent of the gross. Long live Bonetti, my little gold mine. Ha, 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 ha. Who threw that? A man in that car. I saw him do it. He must have flew out of his hand. There's a note on it. <laughs> That's a daft way to send a note. Take a tip, Vanetti. Get out of the country. Last time we cut your rope, next time it may be your throat. Last time we cut your rope? Yes, remember. When I was fixing the sign, I fell down on me... Well, on the electrician. The sooner we get off the streets, the better. Taxi! <laughs> you know, one day we're going to laugh about this. I hope. With a guarantee of ten weeks. The contract of Gilly Benetti is transferred to... Ah, it's all right, it's all right. Hello? It's me, Governor. We've just scared a couple of cadenzas out of your canary. What are you talking about? I ain't got a canary. Hey, who's that talking? Take a guess. We thought you'd like to know we're on the job. Your South American friend will be out of the country by midnight. So long. Oh, Slappy would like to send you a big kiss. Yeah. What? Slappy. Slappy! Hey, Swifty, don't do it. Listen, I need Vanetti. I want him. He's precious to me. Don't do it. Swifty, Swifty, Swifty. What's the address? We don't know. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, Mr. Ricardo, are you ill? Am I ill? What do you call a man who pays 250 pounds to lose himself a thousand plus ten percent? And all I get for it is a tip for a horse that don't win. Oh, the sucker. La donna immobile, qual più vento. George, that was perfect. Oh, thank heaven for Bonetti's practice records. <laughs> well, it seems silly just moving my mouth. I feel like a daft goldfish. <laughs> when the specialists arrive, you'll be singing. Your voice has come back. Aye, but what about the rehearsals tomorrow? You'll have to lose it again. Oh, this is going to be fun. Flyaway voice, come back specialist, flyaway specialist, come back voice. <laughs> They'll spend all the fees in taxi fares. It's the only way, George. We've got to stall till Vanetti arrives. I phoned him and he'll be back for Thursday's opening. I'll be a bit sorry when he does arrive. Sorry? Well, I mean, I'll be just George Butters again and there'll be no more excitement and no more you. Hello? Oh, thanks. Quick, George, they're on the way up. Eh? Two of them. Get your makeup on. The singing will be all right, but suppose they ask me to talk. They won't. I won't even let them see you unless I can help it. Now, I'll put the record on, then they can hear you the minute the door opens. I do feel nervous. <laughs> It won't be necessary to see Mr. Vanetti after all. He's quite better now. You can hear him practicing. Yes, well, we'll see him just a sign. Yes, about his health in general. Oh, but he mustn't be disturbed. Oh, well, we'll see him some other time. Yes. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Lady <laughs> Target. 
it. <laughs> Slappy, control. George, George, these men aren't specialists. Huh? Oh, no. I'd like to see you at a moving target. Say, sister, I thought I'd said goodbye to you once. Now, listen, we've come to warn Mr. Vanetti here that if he don't leave this country in seven days, he'll leave it in a wooden overcoat. Wooden overcoat? You're not wanted here, see? Who sent you to threaten Mr. Vanetti? Threaten? My dear young lady, we're not threatening him. We're just telling him. Yeah. Well, why do you want me to go away? Yours is not to reason why. Yours is but to do. Or die. Die? Oh! Oh, no, you don't, sister. Leave me alone! Take your hands off me! Hey, leave that young woman alone! Another moving target! <laughs> get him quick, Slappy! Don't let him get out! Go on, get him, run for it! Oh, don't move! Here's a moving target, but you can't hit it. Is that so? Come on, Slappy. Slap your knife into this. Ooh! Somebody's left the lift door open. We'll have to walk, Doctor. He's upstairs. He's flat, I suppose. Flat is flat every night. Only this time he can't speak at all. Well, Nerdy, for heaven's sakes, what are you doing there? Playing trains? Well, there's a couple of men up there trying to do our dimey. Oh. Gilly! <clears throat> is this the patient? Ah. His voice seems very good now. Exactly. We'll send you our bill. Good evening. Oh, now, you don't. Ricardo's got to be kept out of this. You are not Gilly Vanetti. Well, you, sir, you see, it was like this. Gilly! It's no good, Carol. The game's up. I'll say it's up. You'll get ten years for this. Fraud! Oh! Impersonation! Oh! And false pretenses! You'll pay for this! You leave him alone. He's just fallen down five flights of stairs. Not nearly enough. Should have been fifty. Don't talk so daft. How could it? There's only six flights to the top of building. And it gives me great pleasure to declare this contract well and truly broken. At last, I've got Vanetti where I want him. <laughs> but I thought you wanted him at George White's theatre in the morning. <laughs> if you listen to reason, we might be able to save you. You might be able to save me. He's going to prison for ten years, and you might be able to save me! I phoned Gilly, and he'll be back by Thursday. But White Show opens on Thursday. Hey, <laughs> it fits in nice, doesn't it? But how can he be back in time to sign the transfer in White's office tomorrow? I don't know! But he doesn't. George does it. George? Who's... Oh, you're George. Yes, Enrico. He won't have to rehearse. We can say he's saving his voice for the night. And on the night, Gilly goes on. And wallop, Mrs. Cox, your mother's won a duck. But he'll never get away with it. Anybody but a lunatic will see he isn't Bonetti. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> now, all I can say is I'm very, very sorry, Lee. Sorry, <laughs> The Ministry of Labour won't grant permits to the Blackbirds. No, I can't put on half a show. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, I feel a bit scared with all these people. Oh, never mind them. Just sign Gilly's name like you practised. My wrist has gone numb already. Then send out press announcements. Say we're appealing. Ah. Good morning, Mr. Good White. Good morning. We're here. Well, what about it? But, Georgie, this is Gilly Vanetti. Hmm? Look, look. Oh, yes. Well, uh, I'm sorry about all this, Vanetti. Uh, he can't talk. He's resting his voice, preserving it for the opening night. Well, as far as I'm concerned, you better pickle it. There won't be an opening night. I've just lost the first half of my show. But, Georgie, we still complete the deal. Ah, oh, be your age, Ricky. I'm losing enough already without keeping you and Vanetti. Why, you're cheap! you got no ethics! I've got no show. When I've got no show, what do I want with ethics? Hello. Yes. Piccolino, begin to begin, Graziani. Suppose you know what this means? Yeah, <laughs> it lets me out. It means White doesn't need Vanetti, and if he doesn't want him, I'm certain I don't. For two pins, I'd blow the whole story just to see you squirm. Save your breath. The show's off, and that finishes Vanetti. Wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. If this show really went on, would he keep Vanetti's contract? Of course he would. He was going to make money out of it. I know a first half of George White's show. So do I. Me kicking Vanetti out of my theatre. George, do you mean it? If it's a good idea, will you sell it to George White? Here am I, with one foot in the bankruptcy court, He's asking me conundrums. Talk, George, and talk quickly. Well, first of all, I can see the fiddle start up. Then the trumpets come in. 
Then the whole orchestra strikes up, the curtain rises, the audience applaud, and on the stage singing... Oh, I can't forget the day when I was young. All together, I can't forget the day when I was young. certainly had a good idea with this. Yes, didn't I? What an idea, George. Uh, what an ant. Let's go and see if Vanetti's arrived. Miss Dean. Yes? A cable for you. Uh, Any reply? No. Well, what's to do? Probably. It's from Gilly. He says the plane may be late. Late? Well, he mustn't be late. He's on soon after the interval. I'll ring the airport. Hello. I've been holding on for ages. There must be a reply. Hello. Hello. No, look. George, I hate to ask you to do this, but if he's not here, you'll have to go on for him. What? Me? No, how can I? Well, we can't let this throw us now. Yes, and if I signal full to them, they'll throw me. It worked once. Why shouldn't it work again? What? What, the gramophone? No, Carol, I couldn't, not in front of all these people. George, you've got to do it for me. Well, I'll do it for you, Carol. Good. But? No time for but. Well, this is only a little but. Well, what is it? But don't let the needle get stuck again. your sister make an exhibition of herself now you're finding likenesses to our George he's the biggest thing in the country sure but it took me to exploit him you know Georgie one day you're gonna put your shoulder out Patting yourself on the back. Well, why shouldn't I? Look at the house, it's packed. It's not packed all that packed. There's an empty box up there. How much longer have we got to listen to this junk? That ain't junk, that's opera. Well, why don't he sing south of the board or something classy? Go oh, on, give him a hand. What for? I think he's terrible. Well, it's his farewell performance, ain't it? Be big. George, you did it. I don't know how I did. I suddenly saw my mother and father sitting in front and I sung the same chorus twice once. Oh, you were wonderful. Aye. Has he come yet? No, he's at the airport. I sent him a duplicate of the next costume so that he can change on the way here. That's good. Duplicate? Why didn't you send him the proper one? I want you to put that one on, just in case. Oh, just in case. Carol, you don't want me It won't be necessary, George. I said just in case. Now, you go and change and I'll telephone the airport and see if he's left. Oh, Mother, is it worth it? I'll never pluck up enough courage to go through with this. George Butters, are you a man or a mouse? It's all very well for you to talk, but I've got to sing. Oh, a black cat. That's supposed to be lucky, isn't it? That depends on whether you're a man or a mouse. I'm a man. <coughs> oh! So, Gilly Vanity, you thought you could hop on that plane and I wouldn't know, eh? Oh! You thought you'd left me flat, didn't you? Well, I took another plane. And if you can think of any good reason why I shouldn't kick the daylight out of you, you'd better start Ooh. talking quick. Um, yes, but you see, I'm, 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 I'm not... Wait, I'm, what, a, what a muck hole. A what? Gilly, you're different somehow. You know, I like you like this. You have a... Je ne sais quoi. 
That's my business. <laughs> well, it, it, it wasn't was me. I, I, it, it was her. <laughs> oh. Well, I had nothing to do with it. So you're in this too? What is all this? If you listen, I'll tell you. I knew he wasn't Gilly Vanetti. If that's a sample that went on in Les Palmer's, I'm very glad I'm not. Now, George, you go and change, and I'll explain the whole thing. You better. Well, you see, when Gilly left oh, here... Oh, can I, I trouble you? What is it? You're sitting on my moustache. <sighs> it's a good job I still haven't got it on. Good man, you got me here to Toronto. Hey, don't I get a tip? Tip? Ah, tip. You go round to the man with the office at the box. He give you the pass to hear me sing. No, I don't want a pass. I want a tip. I've got to eat. I want bread. Bread? <laughs> And you drive the baker, he gives the bread. I sing her, I give the pass. Adios. Fifty, I remember once at the stage door, mind you, I was only a sandbagger then. There was one guy who used to say to me... Quiet. It... It's Nibs. Pardon you. Ah, good evening, Mr. Benetti. Do you remember us? I have not made the pleasure. I am in a dashing tear. You're in no hurry. You ain't going anywhere. What is this, a hold down? Listen, Mr. Benetti, can you fight? Fight? No, I am a singer. Oh, well, that makes it all easier. Here, yeah, that was too quick. Get your number. The Vista, get your number. What number, chum? The car which knocked me down. Oh, so it was a car that knocked you down. Watch out, here comes a bus. <coughs> oh. Here, play the game, that was my turn. Don't be greedy. Sorry, George, he hasn't come. You have to go on again. Good luck. Oh, don't leave me. Don't be silly. I must. Now, on you go.
fights it to leave it up. What's this for? Your two thugs are under there somewhere. Under there? They would stone him off the stage. If you know anything, you'll team up and get stoned with him. I've had some hard fights and I've had a few frights. There was once when the bull got me down. He jumped on me corns and stuck both of his horns in me shanty in old shanty down. His eyes, they were staring and glassy. I could feel his hot breath in me ear. So I stabbed him three times in the chassis and I wished him a happy new year. Then I played on Miss Fanny's guitar While the people all shouted hurrah That bull got a shock so he turned into ox So you'll find him on sale at the bar <laughs> I can get that trolley for three pounds a week You'd better think again, you're talking to his manager No Yes Here I've left old Madrid, it's a good job I did I'd get shot if I went there again they gave me the sack, but I got me own back. They'll be sorry they chased me from Spain. I'll bet that old town is excited. In the bull ring, there'll be lots of rows. But the animals, they'll be delighted. Cos I've mixed all the bulls with the cows. So I'll play on my Spanish guitar. If I practice, I'll to be a star. But don't tell us all, cos I'm going on the dole Till I master this rotten guitar Give the lad a clap Yes, mother Nightingale. I know talk with you. In Glasgow, it is Manchester. In Manchester, it is London. In London, it is no wait. In Las Palmas, it is plain no. But here's the Alhambra. No. Yes. Oh! George! <laughs> Look! A contract! For me? You mean I've done it? I'm a success? Well, there's your answer. 
Do I get all that? Every penny, except my share. Oh, you can have it all. Nonsense. I just take 10% as your manager. As my manager? Oh, I see. You will let me be, won't you? Of course, if that's what you want. I mean, I love being managed by you, Carol, always. George, cut out the being, cut out the managed, and cut out the by. I love you, Carol, always. I love you, Carol, always. <laughs> I've said it! <laughs>